Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion, or I should say Homegrown Jungle. Look at my tomato plants, they're going crazy. So today's video I'm going to take you through on some of the things I have to do here in the greenhouse. I'm going to be pollinating the tomatoes, picking some cucumbers, Doug's going to vacuum pack them, and I've been dying for some pea shoots, so I'm going to seed some of those, and just a few other things and give you an update of what's going on here in the greenhouse and how things are growing. So stay tuned. So one of the main things you always have to be concerned about in the greenhouse is pests. You want to make sure you don't have any pests in here. Even though I have all the insect exclusion over the vents and in the back of uh, where the wet wall is, I still get pests in here when Doug walks in and brings them in from the field. It's one of the reasons why he put the doorbell in. But you know, they just come in, they hop on you and come in. So you always have to check out for them. So I, today I put up the yellow sticky cards just to see if anything's in here so far. And so far I found one white fly and that was it. So that's a good thing. It's early in the year, but you always want to scout. Take time every day, just kind of walk around, look at your plants, flip the leaves over because that's where those little buggers always like to hide. And even in the main crop here, you want to look and see if there's any leaf damage so that you have thrips or any, um, what do they call it, honeydew, the stuff that the aphids leave down. That's all clues that you have a problem. So it's always better to be proactive when it comes to the pest situation. So when we do find a pest, I try to put it on a white index card with a piece of tape and bring it in here and look underneath this microscope. Friends of ours had this so they gave it to me so I could see what's going on. And so I look at it and then I get on my iPad and see if I can identify it, which usually I can. And then I can see what kind of precautions or what treatments I need to do to take care of that pest. You know, be ladybugs or organic natural ways to get rid of it out of the greenhouse. Because you want to make sure you take care of the pests first before the populations explode. So today is my first day of harvesting cucumbers for sale. As I said in the previous videos, I was taking off the lower ones and getting the little cucumbers and eating them myself and they were so good. But now I'm letting the plant go so they can grow to harvest size so I can take them off and sell them. And I do this on a daily basis because you want to make sure you take the cucumbers off every day because what happens is the plant puts all its energy in the more mature fruit down here and it won't give any to this nice little ones up here and they'll end up getting all shriveled up if you don't get them off in time. And then you lose production of the plant. So you gotta be very diligent and get the uh, bigger fruit off. Like I said, I do it every morning. And see, look at how nice that little cucumber is. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this whole row here and then I'm gonna take them inside and I'll show you what we do with them to get them ready for sale. Well, I didn't get as many cucumbers as I thought I would, but you'd be surprised tomorrow how big the ones I left are gonna grow. So I got four here, and we go ahead and shrink wrap them. So what I have here is our heat sealer. We bought this thing seven years ago and it still works wonderful. So, and then I have my food grade plastic here, and it's open on one end so you can slide the cucumber in there. And then we have our shrink wrap, or the heat gun that shrinks the wrapping around the cucumber and seals it up really nice. Because you have to keep the cucumber in a shrink wrap because the skin is so thin that they dry out really fast and get really wimpy. But if you do the shrink wrap on them, these guys will last up to three weeks in the refrigerator because I've had them that long in mine. So I'm going to go ahead and get the labels on these two cucumbers here and then I'll meet you back out in the greenhouse and let's seed some pea shoots as microgreens and I'll show you how I do that with the growing medium and the emitters that I use. Now I'm going to do some seeding here of pea shoots and I'm also going to do some uh, micro broccoli here. And the best way to do it in NFT channels that I've found is you get your channels all clean, ready to go. You get your bio straight and I get this from Crop King. It's already cut to the size of my channels here. I have the more narrow ones. And then you have your emitters here. You know, when you put them in the regular NFT channels, you have to have it full blast. When you put it in for the microgreens, you don't want it full blast. You want to put a, a uh, reducer on here, and this is 1.5 gallons per hour. And it, what I do is then, after everything gets in there, I take a clip, and I clip it here, 
and just let it drip, drip, drip. And it keeps it moist enough and it doesn't wash the seeds down into the uh, nutrient tank. The first thing now is to get the biostrate here in the channel. So I just kind of roll it down. And cut it to length. And what you need to do before you seed is to get this totally wet down and saturated. So I have my little hose here and I have a little knob to turn it on. A little air in the system. And when you do this, you want to make sure you hold on to your bio straight because once the water starts flowing down there, it'll take the whole thing down to the bottom. So you just kind of make sure it's in, connected into your return line and just get this thing totally saturated. And you can tell this is where I like to do my microgreens. I have it all set up here. It's easy for me to get on each side of it and I have the hose here. So, so I want to make sure this sits for a minute to get all the excess water to flow down. Like you no, know, everything is at an angle here going back to the return lines all the way back to the uh, nutrient tank there. So once it gets a little drier, I'm going to go ahead and start seeding this. So I'll meet you back here in one second. So I'm sure I'm going to have some questions of what type of nutrients I'm doing for my, my microgreens and my pea shoots here. I'm using the same formula for my main reservoir, which is for my lettuce formula, and it does really well for any leafy greens. I've had really good success using it, this formula in here. I don't have a big enough area or big enough system to have multiple nutrient systems in here, so I just go ahead and use my lettuce formula and it works fine. So I'm going to go ahead and get these guys seeded. So I do have the, the pea shoots. They're the uh, dwarf gray sugar. Had them for a while, but you keep them in the refrigerator and they do last. These guys, I don't do one of my green seeders. I just kind of hand seed them. They do like to roll around a little bit, so it's a little bit more difficult to do. It's hard to get them perfectly even, but you do the best you can. And sometimes what I do is I go all the way down, seed the whole thing, and then I go back over and get any empty spots that I see. Okay, so since everybody's seated in here, I'm going to go ahead and put the emitter on. Like I said, I use a little paper clip thing here to hold it in place. And you want to make sure it doesn't pop out. And you see it's dripping there. And then these guys, you got to cover them just like any seeds. They need to be covered up and it keeps the algae from growing. So I just place my NFT channels lightly on top here. It'll be a day or so and I'll be able to pull this off and we'll have the baby pea shoots growing. And these guys grow really fast, usually, I think it's like seven days. Let me see what it says here. Yeah, 10 days, they're shoots, so they're a really fast grower. So I'm going to go ahead and get my broccoli microgreens in here, which is our favorite. I know a lot of people like the arugula or the muzuna mixes. Broccoli ones are my favorite, so I'm going to go ahead and plant a whole tray for Doug and I. I'm letting this dry here a little bit, getting the excess water off. I did do a video a little while ago, oh, maybe even longer than a little while ago, of doing the microgreens in the 10 by 12 trays. You know, if you get the mats for that, you can sprinkle the microgreens on that. You can grow those in your kitchen all day long. It's very easy to do. It's the same concept. You get everything wet, you sprinkle it on. You don't want it too dense, but you don't want it too sparse because everything does cost money. So you want to make sure you get the optimal growing. And you can grow them for your health, for your family, and for your good health there in your kitchen. Okay, so here I have my micro broccoli. I've had it for a little while again, but it's um, in the refrigerator, stays good. So these take 10 to 15 days, and I know they usually take about two weeks for me to get these guys to a good height. 
these are very small seeds. I can't do them by hand, so I use the little cedar. And I just kind of go through here and shake them on through. And again, I go back and forth a couple times. It just seems to be easier for me. I try to get them out the whole width of the channel the best I can. So the reason we do the uh, 1.5 gallon emitter per hour on these uh, end of the spaghetti tube here, because could you imagine if that was going down there with all those seeds, it would wash everybody all the way down into the reservoir tank. And this does keep it wet enough for everybody to grow, and I'm going to go ahead and put the covers on. So you're probably wondering, how long do you leave the covers on? Well, I check these guys on a daily basis. And when I start seeing the radicals come out and the green little leaves start to come out, they're not going to be green because they're not going to have any sunlight. That's when you take the covers off. Because if you leave them in there too long, they're all going to get leggy and not look good and not grow really well for you. So keep an eye on them. And as soon as you see the growth, take the covers off and you'll have a good crop. So if you're growing the microgreens in your kitchen, in the trays, and you take the covers off, you're going to want to make sure you have them by a nice window. They can get plenty of sunlight. Or if you can't do that, put them underneath the grow light and you'll have a wonderful crop of microgreens. So we're on our second cluster of flowers here on their tomato plants, which is very exciting. Can't wait to get some tomatoes. So I'm going to go through and pollinate these guys with a handy dandy toothbrush, which is really cool. Uh, we try to do this every other day to make sure we get everybody pollinated. We'd like to have at least three tomatoes, four tomatoes in each cluster, not any more than that because then you don't get the real big tomatoes. So I'm going to go ahead and go through here and I'll show you how these just pollinate them. You can see the little pollen go around. Just takes one little dab to uh, give it a little shake. Oh, that one had a lot of pollen on it. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, let me go through on this side and I'll come on the other side and see if I can find some that have some good pollen to show you the pollen going across. This is cool. This guy's on his third cluster. We got the one down here. One, two, three. And you can tell Doug's been through here getting all the suckers off, getting these guys clicked up, doing the bottom leaves to get these guys to grow nice and healthy. So let me get these guys pollinated. See all the pollen's flying around there. So cool. Even those, those ones are close, I'm going to go ahead and vibrate them a little bit. There's a lot of pollen. So here's Zerotol 2.0. I'm going to be using this product, it's hydrogen peroxide base. I'm going to spray it on top of my beetle buckets. I dilute it with water per their instructions. And this Zerotol 2.0 has a lot of uses in the greenhouse to keep things clean and sanitized. So I go ahead and put the product here in this little handy dandy pump sprayer. Just pump it up. It's really easy to use. And then I just kind of go down here and get a good spray. You want to at least get a little bit into the growing medium. You just don't want to get the surface. And when I did this last year, I did it a couple times during the year. It doesn't bleach out the algae, but it keeps it from growing. And what's nice about this product, it doesn't hurt the plants. I wanted to give you guys a little update on the kohlrabi I started. You know, I think it was a while ago. Let me see here. Yeah, on November 17th, today is uh, the 20th of January. So it does take a little bit longer in here, but it is the coolest crop. I'm really having a good time growing this. And I really think my CSA uh, people are gonna enjoy this in their box in a couple weeks.
because once it gets this size it all of a sudden just blooms and gets huge all of a sudden so I'm gonna get these guys about the size between a tennis ball and a golf ball and I put two or three seeds in each one of these cubes and so one of these will be one serving for the CSA program so as you can see Doug's paste tomatoes are taller than I am and starting to get some really nice fruit on here I think I'm gonna end up picking some of these and making some salsa Hope you guys liked everything I showed you today. And like always, leave me any questions, comments, and suggestions down below. You can see it's getting dark out, even though we're under the lights here. It's getting dark out, and we had to feed the cows. Doug made this really cool feeder for them, so I'll put a little video at the end of that of what he made. It's uh, heavy duty, and George the Bull can't smash it, so that's a good thing. So we'll see you guys next time.